All right, Larry Kruger from the Pig and a Pickle Krug Show with a little 49er video. Does Brandon Ayuk want out or does he want to be a 49er? We'll discuss that coming up next and uh, the offseason ahead. But first, we are brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California. Check them out in Emeryville and Corte Madera. They're open seven days a week from 11 a.m. till 8 p.m. or until they run out. We're also sponsored this month by Sharp Corners Sports Cards and Collectibles. They're on 205 Cypress Avenue in Pacific Grove, California. Give Anthony uh, Catania a call. He's at 831-521-5264. We're also brought to you by ValleyHillRoofing.net, 209-481-6851. The website links for both of our sponsors there will be listed in the description. All right, Brandon Ayuk did not have a big Super Bowl. The Niners did not get him the ball. Um, and, you know, he's waiting for a big contract. $25 million a year, $26 million a year, uh, big money. And the Niners have already committed big money to Debo Samuel. Do they want to commit that much of their salary cap to two receivers, especially a receiver like Ayuk, who you know, was an all-pro wide receiver this year, but they don't use him a ton. They targeted him six times in the Super Bowl. He caught three balls for 49 yards, no touchdowns, no runs, Um you know, it's an awful lot of money, $26 million to throw to a player who you threw the ball to three times uh, this year in, you know, I mean, as far as in this Super Bowl uh, with the biggest game of the year. So Ayuk went on social media and says, um, don't forget what you got, uh, what got you here. So obviously he seems like he's very much in that mode of like, hey, man, don't forget about me. Uh, it's time to pay me. Um, and then his brother said, went on social media and said, this is the exact reason why we leaving SF. He says, my, uh, <laughs> he's like, uh, why does your all pro 1300 yard wide receiver have three catches in the Super Bowl? And then he went on to say BA to Vegas. Uh, this is the exact reason why we leaving SF. So, I mean, what do you make of it? Does Brandon Ayuk want out? Are the Niners hardballing him in negotiations? Uh, is it possible that they would rather invest in uh, Juwan Jennings and keep him around? Jennings was a bigger player in the Super Bowl than Ayuk. Jennings had four catches for 42 yards and a touchdown. He caught four of the five targets that came his way. Um, is it possible they want to re-sign Jennings? You know, and then there's also Brendan Rice. Jerry Rice's nephew is in the draft. A lot of people think he's going to be a third to fifth round pick. Um, I love him. I love Brendan Rice. I, I would definitely go after him. Then there's, uh, then there's Christian McCaffrey's brother, Luke, who's probably more like a five or a six round pick, fifth or a six round pick, maybe even a seventh round pick. Um, so you have two guys there that I think would make a lot of sense to add in the draft that have 49er ties. So if you want to add a couple receivers and you like Jennings and you already have Debo paid, maybe you move Ayuk. Um, I, that to me, that seems like not the guy to move. He seems like the guy to keep. But if he says BA wants, you know, BA to Vegas, um, you know, if that's if that's what he wants, the Raiders do have the 13th pick in the first round. Would you trade Brandon Ayuk to uh, the Raiders for the 13th pick? I wouldn't mind getting Michael Mayer from them. Um, I think Michael Mayer was poorly underutilized with the Raiders. You want to have a, you know, maybe uh, Ayuk and Ayuk and uh, Cam Latou for Michael Mayer in the 13th pick. I don't know. I, I'll say this. That 13th pick would give the 49ers an ability to draft either Taliesi Fuaga, the big offensive tackle from Oregon State, 6'6", 325 pounds, um, super aggressive in the run game. In a lot of ways, he's exactly what the 49ers are looking for. Fuaga's a tough guy. He's a throwback. He's a great athlete. If you saw this guy um, in college, he wore number 75 for Oregon State. He's just a monster. He destroys people on film. Um, you know, you could get him easily probably there if you had the 13th pick. The other guy that's, you know, slated to go right there is uh, 
is J.C. Latham. And J.C. Latham is an Alabama kid who's 6'6", 335 pounds, and he's just a monster. Just an absolute monster. Uh, He wore number 65, played right tackle for Bama. Um, In a lot of ways, he's the prototype. You know, I mean, 6'6", 335, but kind of lean and just tough as heck and big as hell and just a, just a road grader, just an absolute road grading uh, right tackle. He's a right tackle. He's not a left tackle. He played right tackle. So if you were looking for a Colton McKivitz upgrade, I mean, J.C. Latham could be the starting right tackle that protects, you know, Brock Purdy for the next, you know, 10 to 12 years. I mean, he is a big, physical, blue-chipping, you know, pile-driving, road grader of a right tackle. You know, he's just a monster. He looks like the kind of guy that could play right tackle and, you know, be a stalwart for the 49ers for, you know, 20, you know, 15 years. I mean, he just he just looks like that kind of a guy. He's just huge. He's got a wide base. He strikes you with his long arms. He's got great foot quickness, really moves well, and he's just a powerhouse. I mean, the guy is you're not going to find a more powerful uh tackle than uh, JC Latham. And he's a and he's probably going to be on the board right there at 13. So, I mean, then there, you know, there's always a Marius Mims from Georgia. Um, you know, there's some other guys there, you know, but I mean, I would imagine that this is, if you're moving IUK, you're moving IUK with the idea that you're going to get an offensive tackle in the middle of the first round, probably Fuaga or Latham. Um, and, and then, you know, you still have your pick at 31, you know, at that point you could think about, you know, going wide receiver. If you wanted to go wide receiver, you could go defensive line. You could go offensive line again. You could take a quarterback. If you wanted to take a quarterback, you could take a, a premier safety like a Cam Kinchins from Miami. You could take a big defensive lineman like Chris Jenkins from the University of Michigan. You could take a big dominating corner like TJ Tampa from Iowa State. Um, you could take a big defensive tackle movement guy like Michael Hall. A uh, linebacker like Edron Cooper from a and You could take a wide receiver like Xavier Leggett uh, from South Carolina, who's 6'3", 230. You know, maybe that's the kind of player they want to add. So, I mean, they, they you would have your options at the end of the first round. You would be able to get your tackle in the middle of the first round with the 13th pick that you get from the Raiders. The Raiders, I mean, if you look at the Raiders' depth chart, there's no doubt in my mind why they would want IU. I mean, Look what they have. They've got Aiden O'Connell and Jimmy Garoppolo. You got a really good running back in Josh Jacobs. Um, and then receiver wise, they've got Devontae, who they're probably going to trade, Jacoby Myers, Trey Tucker, DJ Turner, Hunter Renfro, uh, DeAndre Carter. I mean, they, they, they have a ghost town at wide receiver. And Ayuk would easily slide in as their number one wide receiver. It would give them an ability to trade Devontae Adams for picks or whatever. So, I mean, if, if Ayuk really badly wants out and his brother is saying, hey, we want to go to Vegas, um, you know, I don't know if you're the 49ers. If he doesn't want to be here and um, he would rather be elsewhere and you have Juwan Jennings and you've got, you know, obviously Ronnie Bell and some young receivers in-house, but then you also have, you know, potentially um, – a draft where you want Brandon Rice. Maybe there's a draft where you want Brandon Rice and Luke McCaffrey. Um, you know, maybe you could. There's a there's a lot of good receivers in every draft. You know, receiver seems to be a position that would be easy to fill. You're not going to find Brandon Ayuk, but um, you know, I'd be I'd be open to it. I'd be open to it just because I think if you're really going to get that premier right tackle, it's probably going to come in the top 15 picks. And to, uh, Fawaga and Latham are blue chippers. And I don't think you could go wrong with either guy. And I think it's a lock that one of those two guys is there at 13. So um, would I make that move? Man, it's a really hard move to make. But if you decide that you want to you know, take a look at Brendan Rice or Luke McCaffrey or one of these receivers in the draft, um, I think that makes a whole lot of sense. I think, you know, you're, you're – 
you're definitely if you threw big money, twenty five million dollars, twenty six million dollars at Brandon Ayuk, you'd have so much invested in two wide receivers on a team that you know really runs the ball a ton. I mean, the Niners had were thirty second in the NFL in pass attempts. Are you really going to have you know two receivers making you know close to sixty million dollars? on the cap when you're 32nd in the NFL in pass attempts, when your whole game is predicated on running the football. To me, I think it might be better to, you know, take IU, see if you could make a move, see if you can get into the middle of the first round, and see if you can get a big, dominant, run-blocking, you know, J.C. Latham, Taliesi Fuaga, dominator. And uh, I think that would have greater value to your football team than, uh, you know, paying another wide receiver you know, 27, 26, 27 million dollars on a team that's looking to run, run, and run some more. So that will be interesting. I mean, they made this deal with Buckner and they re- regretted it, right? They moved Buckner for the 13th pick or 12th pick, 14th pick, whatever it was. They moved down or up a spot. They took Kinlaw. Kinlaw's not Buckner and he's never been as good as DeForest and that deal has not looked good. But, um, then you got to ask yourself, do you, how much money do you want to commit to two wide receivers when you're a run first football team that badly needs a run blocking right tackle that can be a stalwart for the next decade? So this is the spot to get it right here. They really should have filled this need in the past, but they've screwed up the defensive line a few times. So they ha- keep prioritizing D line over O line. This is the year they need to go get their offensive tackle. And I think they know it. So, um, I love Brandon Ayuk. I think he's a really good football player, but if he doesn't want to be here and he wants to be a Raider and the Raiders will give you the 13th pick and maybe you could make a deal that's even a little sweeter than that, uh, I would do it. I absolutely would do it. All right, I know a lot of you probably would disagree with that. Leave your comments uh, below. I'd love to hear what you guys think. And, of course, we're brought to you by Pig and a Pickle, the best barbecue in all of Northern California, as well as Sharp Corners, Sports sports Cards and Collectibles, um, and Valley Hill Roofing. And thanks to all you guys for supporting The Krug Show on YouTube.